Welcome back. About to jump into part three of the Coyote Swap T-Bird project. You can see it's now in the shop, it's home, and I'm super excited here. So going to uh, get into getting the rest of everything stripped out in the engine compartment, front suspension, K-member, wheels, brakes, brake lines, everything. This thing's a mess. I totally forgot that two years ago when I pulled out the uh, supercharged 302 that was in it, man, I was just in a rush to get it out. I had it sold to a good friend. I wanted it gone. And uh, I just rolled the car out, put it in storage and didn't clean nothing in here. So man, I got, it's a mess. So I don't know, show you the car. See, uh, you can see what I'm working with here. Um, it's not a show car. Didn't build it to be a show car. It's something just to drive beat on, enjoy, whatever. So um, it's nice for what it is, I think. Um, could it be nicer? Yeah, sure. They always can, but I'm, uh, I'm super happy with the car. So let's, let's, uh, let's check it out, see what we're working with here. So here's the car. A um, little history on the car. It's 83 Turbo Coupe. Yes, it is an original Turbo Coupe, and it was actually built in May of 83, which would make it uh, one of the very first uh, Turbo Coupes Ford ever produced. Uh, May was when the production run started. And as a matter of fact, this car, kind of cool, when I first got it and I started tearing into it, when I went underneath the car, I was kind of taken aback by looking up in the uh, dry shaft, or the transmission tunnel, um, the floor pan where the shifter goes was uh, cut out with a blowtorch, it looks like, and the little plate that holds the, the hole for the transmission shifter is shot through the floor with sheet metal screws and sealed with like body sealer. We'll come to find out because this car is such an early build turbo coupe. Um, Ford didn't have a manual trans floor pan for these cars yet because there were no uh, stick shift uh, Thunderbirds up until this point. They were all automatics. So they basically just took the first few uh, automatic floor pan uh, T-Bird chassis they had and just blew holes in the transmission tunnel and then affixed the uh, the part that holds the, the sheet metal that holds the, the shifter. So kind of cool, I guess. And uh, I do have some paperwork in there um, stating that this car was uh, previously owned by, uh, I guess, NASCAR driver Kenny Schrader and was uh, kept within... Um, him and uh, one of his employees for many years. So kind of a cool story. It's got a little bit of pedigree to it, I guess. Anyway, obviously it did not look like that actually. Here we go. Let me show you this. That was the car when it went up for sale on eBay. Um, I believe 2005 or 2006. And then this is how I acquired the car. Probably uh four four or five years ago that's how i got it just as a roller no drivetrain no transmission no wiring nothing in it then of course eventually it uh you know turned into what you see now so anyway here let's uh get a better look at the car so under the hood like i said it's a mess i got a lot of work here um there is all kinds of uh, rubber residue from the blower belts. This thing used to eat blower belts like I eat Taco Bell. So got to clean up all of that mess. Wiring's got to all come out. We're going to tuck, hide, clean up. I've already talked to, I'm very fortunate. I have Scott Rod Fab literally right around the corner from me here in Toledo, Ohio. And uh, I talked to him a couple days ago about some uh, filler panels for the fender aprons in here. We just got to verify. I didn't realize that I thought all Fox bodies were the same. Actually, Scott Rod made that filler panel for me. Check out his website for uh, purchase one of your own. <clears throat> anyway, um, we just got to verify. I didn't realize that not all Fox body inner aprons were the same. Um, I guess Mustangs, Fairmonts are different, and he's never built a set for a T-Bird yet. So we're going to pick up some uh, cardboard templates here and verify which one this car is or... In fact, if it's a, a third kind, and uh, if they are, then he'll build those for me. So I'll have some nice filler panels. Battery tray was on this side of the car. Obviously, there's a solenoid. Now I'm going to move it over to this side here because the uh, I'm going to try to use the factory air box that came with the Ford control pack. I really want this to look 
I don't know, as factory as it possibly can under here. So a lot of work to do under here. So on the inside of the car, so, you know, things like the door panels, the carpet, the seats, everything in here is all the original. This car, um, when I got it, I believe it had uh, 73,000 on the odometer. I built my own dash for the car. It's got a uh, speed hut tachometer and GPS speedometer in there. If I put a battery in it, I could actually uh, I could turn the key on and it would tell me, oh, damn it, what the mileage is on it now. But I want to say it's, it's still like around 77 or 78,000, something like that. Nice thing is Speed Hut Speedos, you can actually program your mileage into them. So, yeah, I just did uh, some textured ABS plastic. I got to clean up some of the, the rust from sitting around. The other gauges were just auto meters that I had from another project. I used them in here where the factory clock was. And then uh, there was nothing over on that side. So I just threw some gauges over there. A little uh, GT emblem to go with the uh, what if theme that I ran with on this car. Little uh, power point down there. And uh, this car did have a water meth system on it that I had configured all into the center console. So obviously I don't need that no more either. But uh, yeah, redid the headliner and it's a nice clean car, man. Super comfortable. Love this thing. Oh yeah, an SVO steering wheel. Yeah, the trunk currently is a mess. It's just packed full of all the parts. I got all the the rest of the chassis wiring for the control pack, the air box, gas pedal, bracket, all the uh, all the stuff for that is all stuffed in here. Got the rest of the wire harness from Ford. It's got a nice stereo system. I even went ahead and found an original uh, aluminum spare tire, and it is a daily, so it has a nice aluminum spare. Car sits on um, 17 by 9, these Cobra replicas. I really like the look of them. It's got 245 45s in the front, 245 50s in the back. These things are definitely getting boiled off as soon as this thing's up and running, because they are, well, they're like three years old now, so... Car's already got a disc brake, 88 turbo coupe, um, axle in it. It's got Mosier axles. It's got a factory Ford traction lock with the carbon fiber uh, Cobra clutches in it. Car's got a single three-inch exhaust system on it. It's actually a Stinger uh, performance catback for like a 2.3 turbo, turbo coupe setup. And then um, just had a local shop build me a two and a half inch Y pipe goes into a Flowmaster merge. And this has a uh, stainless, which, which one does this car have? This car has the Magna Flow muffler on it. There's videos, there's racing videos, there's dyno videos of this on my channel. You can go back a couple years and you can see uh, videos of that and hear what this thing sounded like. My plan is to keep that single exhaust on the car. It's super stealthy, um, with, even with the supercharged 302 in it cruising idling it's fairly tame until you really laid into it so i'm hoping the coyote will kind of be the same especially you know this doesn't have you know the lumpy cams in it like my other motor had so um i'm gonna run with it i made 420 horse to the wheels with the old setup through that exhaust system i can't imagine that this is going to make any more power than that so i don't see why that system would not work for this car or I wouldn't see why this system wouldn't work for this motor as well. That that same power range, you know. Plus, you know, all the trucks, they're all pretty much single three-inch exhaust system from the factory anyway, the Coyote. So that's what we're going to go with. So i um, going to go ahead, get jumped in to start cleaning the engine bay, pulling everything out of there, get this thing up in the air, get everything ripped out. And uh, like I said, the motor here is, it is now wired. Contro all the harnesses on there. It is good to go. We got her dressed up a little bit like I wanted to do. Yes, I am planning on reusing all of the factory stuff that was included in the Ford control pack. I don't want a uh, aftermarket cold air kit with just a open element air filter under the hood, just breathing hot air off the headers. Um, Ford put a lot of time and money into designing that air box and I'm gonna try to 
try to use utilize it and uh, make it functional best I can so um, yeah so let's get going on this so I got the motor basically all prepped I ended up ordering a set of these engine lift brackets that bolt to the cylinder head as opposed to I don't know taking some steps backwards and having to pull the intake and the wire harness and buying one of them plates a bolt to the intake to drop it in and then here's the back one bolts to the back of the head uh, I did a little bit of research I was under the impression that there was no way the motor would go in from up top but after doing some more uh, looking online it looks like a lot of people actually are putting them in from up top so my new idea is uh, I'm gonna try to simplify things I'm gonna get the brake booster out I'm gonna jack up the car enough just to drop the K member all the suspension out of the car and then I'm gonna go ahead and drop the motor in from up top. I'll just kind of let it hang from the cherry picker and then I'll get the uh, Team ZK member in place and then get it all bolted up together that way. I think that sounds a little bit safer and a little bit easier than the original plan. So that is the plan for today, along with a bunch of other little things here too, so. All right, anyway, with, with that being said, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this video off here Try to keep it short. I don't want to lose anybody's attention span here. So, um, like I said, I'm going to cut it here, and I'm going to jump into a bunch of just kind of the little, kind of boring things that don't need to be documented. Um, nobody cares. So, I'm going to knock out a bunch of crap on this, and uh, I'll pick up the, the video next when the motor is actually ready to be dropped in the car. I got a lot of cleaning under the hood to do. I'm still debating on... Um, whether or not I'm going to smooth the engine bay and get the, uh, the Scott rod panels I really want to do, but some things have came up. I'm kind of in a, I didn't want to be in a time crunch, but now I am. Um, I was one of the guys that took advantage of this, this stupid, crazy car market right now. And I sold my three-year-old super duty back to the dealership for crazy money and ordered a new, uh, 2022 super duty that, uh, I have no idea what I'm going to get. So right now I am, without a vehicle other than this or Gilligan, my Bronco 2, which is not exactly set up for daily driving, especially uh, 60 miles each way to work. So yeah, I'm kind of in a, in a crunch now. I have a, a week and a half vacation right now, and I would really like, I'd really like to have this car back together and back to a daily status if I possibly can. I feel like I have everything here for it, so I'm gonna knock out as much as I can, as quick as I can, and get this thing back on the road hopefully be daily driving this thing and having a blast i hope so so yeah so that'll be uh the end of this video i'm gonna get cracking on this i'll uh i'll start documenting some other things here uh probably look for uh, another video in a couple days probably with uh some major progress hopefully uh with this thing nestled in its new home i hope so uh thanks for watching like i said uh shoot me a comment um anything you see i'm doing wrong any tips anything like i said it's my first coyote swap um, I'm just kind of, you know, kind of doing my own thing here. So, um, yeah, shoot me a comment if you want. Give me some tips, man. So, uh, we're out. Gotta get busy. So, see you in the next one.